every once in a while, you just get surprised. And every once in a while, you experience a first. And this is my first with Western Digital, the SNE 50s. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nico. So today we're looking at these awesome drives by Western Digital. They're the SN850 drives. They're Gen 4 drives. I have a two terabyte and a one terabyte. The journey to getting to these drives is long, but I will keep it short. But before we get to that story, I have to let you know that I've been doing tests to see what Gen 4 drives are the best. And there's a reason for this. Well, simply put, all drives are not made alike. That's the issue here. And when you start off on your journey, you usually go up and look at reviews and you look at all the different YouTubers, what they're saying, what they're not. And then you make an educated decision based on all, all the research you're collecting. Well, me stupidly did not do all my research like I usually do. And I went and bought a Sabrent drive. And then from that Sabrent drive, I realized there is a caching issue like most drives in this class will have. And of course, uh, then I ended up testing out the 980 Pro and the Western Digital Black. The uh, thought process here is very simple. You need to look at this in perspective of what is it that you really need before you go out and buy one of these drives. I have all the videos uh, listed below so that you can take a look at the different drives individually. And then when I do a comparison of all the drives, the journey is uh, listed throughout the videos, but I will keep it short in here. I ended up going with the Sabrent drive first, thinking it is the fastest, thinking it is the best drive on the market. It is the cheapest one as well. And all these people were saying great things about it. And all of a sudden, it's, I realized that it was not as good as I said. What ended up happening is I had a 960 drive, 960 Pro drive, and that died. Samsung helped me out with that. And then when I went to figure out what I was going to do with it, they didn't have a two terabyte. And for the cost allowance, whatever, uh, I ended up going with a, a Western Digital SN850 two terabyte. And then that's where if I had never bought this, I would have never been able to buy uh, to, to figure out that there was an issue with the with the uh, Sabrent. So um, what ends up happening? I figure out there's a caching issue and then I start doing my research and oh my goodness, all the people complaining. I'm like, I gotta do some testing, heavy testing. So I started doing all this testing between the two drives and I ended up buying a 980 Pro and a one terabyte of these Western Digital Blacks to do comparison tests to figure out, you know, what is going on. Uh, and mainly because when I, you know, called up Sabrent, they were just kind of like, you okay? Like, I, I got no love from them. It was just kind of like, hey, idiot, thanks for not checking the reviews. That's what it felt like. Um, that video is below, so check that out. And at the end of the day, I was sitting there, I was like, I'm coming from Samsung. I'm always a, you know, I'm a, a really big fan of Samsung. So I thought, hey, that's going to be great. I don't think I'm going to be buying this Western Digital Black, but long behold, the Samsung had some caching issues as well. What I ended up discovering is that it's not really that you're filling up the drive that's the issue. Uh, these drives are running around 90% and they're fine. Okay. However, there is a caching issue on the transfers and how much transfer you're going to do all at once or with a concurrent amount of time. So as, as you're loading up stuff and moving things, you'll have these issues issues. The um, Sabrent is the worst of the bunch. You can't even get, go past a couple hundred uh, gigabytes and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, why am I having issues? The Samsung was up in the numbers of like six, 700 before I saw any issues, which was like, it's, it's huge numbers, yes. But when you're moving a lot of content, then uh, you, you've got this issue. So as a content creator, it's a problem. Okay, so this video I'm making on 4K, this is gonna turn out to be like 50, 60 gigs on just one file of me filming. Like, it's just one file, let alone all the other ones I'm gonna do with everything else. So, you know, you're moving a lot of data on a daily basis is what I'm getting at. That being said, um, the thought process here is very simple. What ended up happening with uh, any of the drives I'm going to go with is, you know, which one is the least amount. Now, this Western Digital one terabyte, I saw the issue with it here, but it was like split like maybe a minute. And by minute, I mean, I ran the test and to see how fast it was going. And I saw that I'd slow down. And then right after I did a big write and then I ran it again and it was back to normal. So um, I, I have to say I'm impressed because both drives, both the two terabyte and the one terabyte are acting in similar fashion. Now online, online, okay, they 
there are people that are complaining about this and that they have a caching issue. That being said, when I got this drive, I had to do the firmware upgrade and I, I should have tested it in advance, but I didn't, uh, my bad. Uh, and then I didn't feel like going in there and uh, reversing it. But at the end of the day, um, the, the thought was very simple that I didn't have the issue. Uh, I didn't replicate the issue. So if I get another drive, if, it, if, you know, if I see something, uh, I will make another video about it. But other than that, it's, you know, it's good to go. Uh, overall, these drives have been awesome. I'm going to show you some stats now so you can see what we're talking about. And we're going to compare these stats versus some other stats with the other drives. So you can take a look and I can give you my opinion on what is occurring. Now, if you've seen my videos before, these are the test files that we have been using, 45 gigabytes and 90 gigabytes. These are 4K shoots, videos only. Then we do have B-roll clips where there's 85 gigabytes or so on there, 20 second B-roll cl clips, 4K each. And of course, the uh, photos and videos and no 4K is 122 gigabytes. And then I did do another folder where I added uh, 4K videos in there, 168 gigabytes altogether, uh, representing like the bigger, like, you know, a typical shoot where you would go out there and get a whole bunch of stuff together, photos, videos, you name it. And then there's, of course, the random files, 46.6 gigabytes here. And here uh, we got about 5,700 uh, files. And you can see we have done a lot of tests and we did do uh, two sets of tests with our motherboard because we found that the top M.2 slot was running a little bit faster than the bottom one. The top one will probably uh, affect this in most motherboards because it will run right to the chip where to the CPU where the bottom one runs to the chipset. And uh, because of that, uh, apparently ASUS is working on it, but it is a little bit slower. So I wanted to make sure that I was uh, checking my data and the data was uh, still consistent. We look at these stats now, uh, the consistency is the idea that we want to follow. And I did find them to be consistent. However, I would have liked to see these numbers be more equivalent, which tells us that with a two terabyte drive versus a one terabyte drive, there will be a difference in the caching. And at that, there will be a difference in how these drives operate, which tells us that if you were using a two terabyte Sabrent or 980 Pro, you would see this difference in uh, how these do work. Um, that being said, in the case of what we're doing here and testing these two different drives, this is about the one terabyte drive and the inconsistency that we're seeing in these cases is the fact that I was doing the tests and in this case, the random 46 gigabyte came towards the end of all the tests. And in this set, it was the 4K 122 gigabytes. Now I tested this several times to see if this was a case and I did notice that towards the end of the run of all the transfers from one drive to the other and then back, this uh, these two drives would see the similarity pattern, which would be the SN850 one terabyte, have a caching issue that would be reset rather quickly in terms of a time. It would be, I would do a test with the, um, uh, benchmarking it and then I would see the slowdown, I would redo the test and it would be back to normal. In comparison, the Sabrent just never came back and the 980 Pro, as people have said online, is that six hour to a couple of days idle that it sits there, it'll come back and you won't have the caching issue. I, I personally didn't experience that, but you know, if, if that's true, then the, the Samsung is probably better than the Sabrent. Um, from that perspective. Now, overall, it runs in the middle of the pack uh, when it comes to the SN850, and we see that is performing in a good pace. When we flip to right to the NVMe drives, the one terabytes, we do see consistency overall of it being a better drive. Now, I flipped again because I have the M2, uh, M.2 slot issues, and we do see similar patterns where the idea starts to shape up that the, that the 850 drive does a better job. The Western Digital is killing it. No matter what you see, it is consistency because that's what we really want to see with these tests. We want to make sure that we're consistent in everything we do because we're working and we want to know that when we're doing a photo shoot with 4k or no 4k we're going to still work at a good pace and we're going to know that the consistency is 
there, not just in smaller uh, set of file transfers or in bigger ones. The other thing we need to remember is this random speed. And when we look at the random speed, we can see that with the exception of this one set, um, they were all consistent. And you're not seeing this crazy jump up, jump down. And that's where I want to see my workflow um, be good with the transfers, but also with the software and that need to access the random files as the smaller ones, especially when running any kind of software. So what does this tell us about the SN 850 by Western Digital? Simply put, it's the go-to. It's the go-to. Now, it's at the front of the pack. So I'm not saying the other uh, drives are bad. There are a whole bunch of other drives coming out too. One drive I was reading has like 7,500 read speed. Like it's crazy. They're trying to like compete. But at the end of the day, the question goes consistency, reliability, and does it deliver? And the Western Digital has with the products I have tested. At the same time, I don't want to go experience the same thing with the warranty claim and all this and that with, that I did with the Sabre with any other company. And all the other companies have similar kind of warranty on them. So I don't want to go through that process, to be honest. What I really want is the idea that this works and I can carry on through its lifespan, not worried about something going wrong with my data. Number one concern for me. At the same time, it's getting something that does what they say is going to do because I'm spending money on this stuff and I expect it to do what they're telling me it's going to do. So when you're looking at it and you're asking yourself, you know, between the one terabyte and the two terabyte, they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do. So if you're thinking to yourself, hey, I'm in between the Samsung and I'm in between the Western Digital, the Samsung 980 Pro does the job as well. It does a good job. You saw from the averages there, that is sticking you know, right in there with the averages and it's doing a good job. Did it have the caching issue? Yes, but it came a lot later. It came towards six to 800 gigabytes of transfer. So the average person won't even get to that. And if they do, um, you know, the question is, will they notice in time? Have people noticed? Have people complained about it? Yes, and I think they were testing it. And I think they found out the hard way that kind of like I did with the Sabrin. That being said, if you're looking at these two drives and you're saying, what do I want for reliability, consistency? Okay, and I know it's going to deliver. It's the Western Digital right now. Will there be f future uh, uh, firmware updates? Probably. Have I seen it happen before with Samsung product? Yes. Have I seen it happen with Western Digital? I just saw it. I, and, and the question goes, what are you using this though for really? If you're telling me you're going for a Windows drive, then either one is good. If you're going for like a gaming, you know, you, you have a gaming rig and you just want to throw a fast drive in there for some reason and the 970 uh, Pro isn't good enough or the Evo Plus, then go get this. Like if it's only a hundred bucks more, why not? It's good. Um, but don't expect to do massive data transfers and all that stuff and fill this up. Do not fill this up. 100% don't. At the same time, you're looking at it and you're asking yourself, you know, the Sabrin's cheaper. Do not buy this, the Sabre one. I guarantee you'll be disappointed. So I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart, my disappointment and what happened with that story. I have the video linked below to go and watch it so you can see the experience of what I discovered and where my whole journey brought me here. It's critical that you do add that to your research because you need to be researching before you buy. Don't take anybody's word, including mine. Go research, sum it up, make the right decision for you because your workflow might be a little bit different than everybody else's. My workflow is big data sets, it's big like files moving and, and this is the problem that uh, I had. Now, at the same time, will the Sabrin, if you have it, Will the Sabrin work for you? Will the 980 Pro work for you if you're having writing issues? Yes, format it. Make sure you don't throw a lot of data on there and don't transfer a lot of files, simply. And that will last. When you finally see that cache fill up for some reason, just format it again, and that's it. Okay, bottom line. It's just one of those things that you have to sit down and ask yourself the idea of what is your risk tolerance and how much time do you have to waste and what do you really want for the extra 30 40 bucks this is awesome like i mean it was even on sale for like 50 bucks off so i mean uh and they've been coming going on the sales uh as, as i've been making this video uh the two terabyte if you guys do out there find a two terabyte because i don't have one in the area so i couldn't test one but the two terabyte for the 980 pro if you do find one and you try out some of the big set of data like I did, 
Hey, give it a shot. Leave a comment below. Did you find any issues with your testing? I want to know because I will be buying more drives. This isn't like my first or last time buying drives and I need to get more drives and uh, uh, we're going to be building some more. So if that two terabyte works well or if there's an update to the 980 Pro, leave a comment below. I, I want to know because I'm going to be interested to know uh, what is going on. And uh, I'm sure everybody who's watching this who does go read the comments will want to know as well. Uh, that being said, uh, thank you for watching this. Leave a comment below. Leave a question below if you have one uh, about my experience and what you're seeing and maybe your workflow, maybe you're having a problem. Uh, leave it below. It might help somebody who's reading it. And of course, I'm going to try to answer every question I can. And um, don't forget to to watch all the videos in this series so you can get a good look at Gen 4 and all the drives. Do you really need a drive? That video will help you out greatly. All of that will be linked below in all these videos. And of course, click on the next videos up top. Like, subscribe. I'll help the channel out.